Let's go over five DaVinci Resolve text effects in under 12 minutes. I'm gonna start by showing you guys how to make the follower animation, then right on text effect. Then we're gonna go into this 3D inset text effect, which I haven't seen anywhere else. Then we're gonna go into this outline reveal, as well as this morph text effect. Let's get into it. And we're gonna be doing all of this inside of Fusion. I'm gonna keep it pretty simple for you guys, so you should be able to follow along. Let's go into our media pool. Let's create a new Fusion composition. We can just leave it at the default settings there, drop it into the timeline, drag your playhead above it, and head into the Fusion page. We're gonna add a text note, drag it onto our pipeline, just like so. I'm gonna type in follower animation, change the color to black. Then I'm gonna right click the text box right here and I'm gonna click follower. That's gonna open up the modifiers tab and we're gonna go into there. Then we're gonna go into transform. We're gonna set a keyframe on offset and that's gonna open up this path one. We can just go back into follower. Now at the start of the fusion composition, I'm gonna make this animation about 10 frames. So on the 10th frame, I'm gonna add a keyframe again inside the follower. Uh, on the offset, just like so. And then I'm gonna go back to the starting frame and set another keyframe. With the starting frame, I wanna drag this text just below to where it currently is. So if it's right there right now, we're just gonna drag it a little lower, something like so. Then as well with the opacity, I'm going to go to keyframe 10, click opacity so that it's keyframed, go back to frame zero, add another keyframe and put the opacity at zero. Uh, to get the follower effect animation going, you have to go into timing and set a delay between each letter. So again, it's between each character right now. Let's put the delay at just one frame, just like so. And now we have a follower animation, but to make it pop uh, just a little bit more, we're gonna go into the spline, grab displacement by selecting it, hit zoom to fit, grab both of them, hit S, then hit T to open these ease in and out controls. I'm gonna change it to around 70. Uh, and that's just gonna make it pop in nicely. And now we have a follower animation. I'm gonna add a text note, drag it in over our pipeline, just like so. I'm gonna write right on. I'm gonna change the font to more of a written text. So I'm gonna use Rage Italic. I'm gonna increase the size, something like so. And then I'm gonna change the color to, let's say, a yellow. Now I'm gonna hit Shift Spacebar and add a Mask Paint node, which is this guy right here. Hit Enter. It's gonna make your text disappear. We're gonna go into this Mask tab, upper right, and click Invert. Change the stroke mode to just a single stroke right there. And then in the controls, let's change the brush size so that it's just slightly bigger than the thickest part of our text. And you can do that by either dragging the size back and forth like so, or you can hold control and drag your cursor to the right by pressing in. Let's decrease our softness to pretty low. And then under stroke controls, make sure that the stroke animation is set to right on. And now you're just gonna paint over your text. So I'm gonna increase my size just a little bit, just like so, we're gonna start. And if you mess up just like this, you can see all the keyframes are generated. We're just gonna hit control Z and we're gonna try again. So we're gonna start, we're gonna erase it. Just make sure that you go at the same pace for the entire text because it's gonna give you a better result. You don't need to go fast, so just take your time we can always speed this up in post just like so erase that erase that and if you accidentally let go and finished your writing no need to worry we can just start again with the next letter so now we're gonna do e now that we've finished writing on our text let's make sure we invert our mask again so now it's gonna reveal instead of being hidden but as you can see it's obviously going at the same time and it's going really slow so let's open our keyframe editor with our mask paint selected now let's expand all of our strokes that we did so we did three in this case let's select our stroke one which is the first one we did and drag it to the start of the timeline, uh, something like frame two there. Then with all these keyframes still selected, let's hit this time stretch just like so. And we're gonna drag this way over so that it just tightens up that animation. Now with these next strokes, we just need to line these up accordingly. So if we hit zoom to fit, maybe we'll zoom in a little bit more drag this over just a little bit better. Let's grab our stroke two, which again is our next letter and make sure that first keyframe lines up with our last keyframe. Again, let's hit our time stretch and let's drag that back in so it's going a little bit faster. This should be a lot shorter than one below because again, this is just one letter. Let's play it back. So the, the E and the on is a little bit fast. Make sure we uncheck the time stretch. Now let's select both of these and let's hit the time stretch and we can do both at the same time. Let's just drag this out just a little bit just to increase the length. There we go. Now we have a perfect right on text. All right, and now for the 3D inset text. This is a pretty cool effect. We're gonna start by opening an S text node just like so. I'm gonna write 3D inset text. Then let's add an S rectangle node. After the S rectangle, let's add an S boolean node. Plug the S text into the boolean 
and set the Boolean operation mode from intersection to subtract. Let's view the Boolean. Now you can see that we have a rectangle and we have our text subtracted from this rectangle. On the S rectangle, let's increase the height and the width to one. Let's change our font. Now let's plug that into an extrude 3D. Let's add a merge 3D. Then let's add a renderer 3D. Pipe that in onto our timeline. With your extrude 3D selected, let's go into transform and push back the angle on the X value, something like so. And then let's push it to the right, something like so. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna increase the extrusion depth just like so, and it's gonna make this entire block extrude. So let's add first an ambient light to our scene into the merge 3D. Then let's add a spotlight just like so. Now let's open the Merge 3D by pressing two on the Merge 3D, grab our spotlight, increase the height, and drag the angle down so that it's facing the scene, something like so. We can increase the height of this spotlight a lot more. Then in the Renderer 3D, enable lighting and enable shadows. Now this is what our scene looks like. Our spotlight is not showing in the right area. So I'm gonna open a second monitor here on the left side. I'm gonna press one on Merge 3D. What we're gonna do is we're gonna drag the spotlight like so. We're gonna increase the size. And then on the spotlight, we're also going to increase the uh, cone angle so that it's a bit of a wider look, something like so. Now, if we look at our final output, you can see that we sort of got this text effect going, but it is too small. It is way too small for a scene. This block is not taking up the entire scene. Let's add a camera 3D and plug this into our merge 3D. Now let's take the camera right here and let's pull it back out, something like so. We're gonna have to increase the height until this 3D text is right in the middle of our scene. Now let's close this up so that we can look a little bit closer at our text. It's looking pretty good already, but with the camera 3D, let's just again make sure that it's centered a little bit more. So let's increase the Z values so that were pulled out a little bit further. Let's maybe make the text a little bit smaller. And then with the merge 3D selected, let's push our spotlight a little bit to the right, but then let's grab this green axis here and sort of angle it back towards our text. And then when we view our media out, now we got this 3D text effect. Now with the extrude 3D, let's change the material, override the diffuse color and change it to maybe uh, something like a purple. Now let's animate our 3D camera around the text. So with the merge three selected, what we first have to do is we have to open the camera 3D and we have to select use target because this target is really gonna help us keep the text in the center. So what we wanna do now is we pretty much just wanna make sure that this target is actually inside of this box, which it already is. If it's not, just increase or decrease the Z value right there. So we can do maybe something like so. But if we now open the media out in our second viewer and open the camera 3D in our first viewer, you can see that our target does not actually line up with our text. So with the target, let's just increase the Y value so that the target is sort of lined up with the text, just like so maybe something like so. And now at the starting keyframe, set a keyframe on your X, Y, and Z rotation. Now go to your last keyframe and you can play with this however you want. Let's just increase the X rotation so that we sort of pan around it, something like so. And that just keeps the text right in the center. And now for the first time that I've seen in DaVinci Resolve, you have some animated 3D inset text. Let's go. And now we're gonna go into this outline effect. We're gonna still use some 3D tools, but it's gonna be less 3D involved, I promise. So we're going to add a text 3D, then we're going to add a renderer 3D. We're gonna plug this in over top of our background, just like so. We're gonna type the text that we want. So I'm gonna write outlined text, just like so. I'm gonna decrease the size, and I'm just gonna set the vertical anchor to zero. Then in the text 3D, we're gonna go into extrusion. We're gonna add just the smallest amount of bevel depth, and then we're gonna increase the bevel width a bunch. Then we're going to add a background node. We're going to set the type from solid color to gradient, so we get this black and white gradient. On the text 3D now, let's change the shading. We're gonna uncheck use one material, and that lets us change the color of the actual text itself and that little bevel we just created. So let's just make sure our background is black or whatever color we actually want. With our text 3D, let's change the color of the text to the same color as our background. So in this case, black. Now you can see that our bevel material is white. So it is making this outlined effect, but we're actually gonna change it from color or a solid to image. This gives us this green input here. We can take our background, plug it into our text 3D. 
Now this is acting as the bevel material for our text. Let's take our gradient and let's just crush it in a whole bunch, something like so. Now we can take this offset and use the offset to animate the lines drawing onto the text. Let's go to our starting frame, add a keyframe, drag the offset all the way up so that it hides the text. Then let's go forward a bunch of frames, drag the offset all the way down so that the text is revealed. And then at the same time, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a raise effect, just like so. And that's just gonna draw on some rays as if light is shining through a dark text. And then if we take our merge, we can just animate the size from start to finish a little bit. And now we pretty much have just created a Hollywood text effect. And side note, I've also created this text welding effect in the past for one of my clients. If you're interested in learning how to make this, please drop a comment down below. It's a little bit more involved so I can make a future video on it if you want. Let's go into the final text effect right now. Let's add a text node. Let's change the font and text. Then I'm gonna add a dissolve node, like so. I'm gonna control C, control V, plug the text into the dissolve. The second text, I'm gonna write text instead of morphed. Now I'm gonna drag this over top of our pipeline, something like so. And now with this dissolve node, you can see that if I scrub through it, it's gonna go from morphed to text. So we're gonna animate that. Frame zero, let's start on morphed. Let's go forward to frame 30 and let's dissolve all the way over to text. Let's decrease this background brightness because it's a little bit distracting right now, something like so. And now what we're gonna do after the dissolve, we're going to add a blur node. And with this blur on frame 30, once we're all the way over to text, I'm gonna decrease the blur size to zero, add a keyframe. First frame, we're gonna add a keyframe at zero. And then right in the middle, we're gonna change the keyframe to at frame 15. We're gonna increase the blur to maybe something like 13 so that it's barely legible to read. And then after all of that, we're going to add a bitmap node. Now with the blur selected, we're gonna plug it into the bitmap just like so. Let's disconnect it from this merge. Let's add another background node right here. Let's change this color to maybe something like a tealish blue. Let's plug the bitmap into our background and our background back onto the merge. Now, the only thing that we've done is we've just changed the color of our actual text. Inside of the bitmap here, this is where the magic happens. We're gonna change our threshold. So we're gonna decrease the low end and decrease the high end so that our threshold makes the sharp line. And then now when it dissolves between the two, we get this nice morph to the text effect. Something that I like to do to just go a little bit further is obviously this morphed is pretty wide and the text word is pretty small. So with the text, let's just increase our tracking so that it's a little bit wider to start. Let's add a keyframe on tracking at frame zero and then frame 30. Let's add a keyframe back at one. And now as you can see, the morph text sort of brings it all together. It looks pretty good. Let's go into the spline editor and let's add some easing to all of this. So character spacing, select both keyframes, hit S. With the dissolve, what we're gonna wanna do, grab both keyframes, hit S. With the blur, it's a little different. Let's grab all keyframes, hit S. And then we're gonna drag these handles in at the bottom and then the top handle, we're actually just gonna shorten up so that we sort of get this uh, steep peak right here in the middle. And now if you play this back, we got a smooth pop over to text and it looks great. All right, that is the end of it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys enjoyed it, please let me know down below in the comments. If you guys like my longer style videos a little bit more than this, also let me know. But if you guys like this, sort of this action packed, fast paced episode, uh, just let me know and I will make more. I'll make more either way. So hope you guys have a good one. See you next time.